the, the direct anterior approach to hip replacement is not a new approach. Uh, it is an approach between muscles supplied by two different nerves. Uh, the femoral nerve supplies the quadriceps and sartorius muscle, and then the superior gluteal nerve supplies the abductors and the tensor fascia lata muscle. And the approach is between the tensor fascia lata muscle and the sartorius. Well, the traditional hip replacement approach, the patient is usually on their side. There are a number of different approaches, but the most standard approach is a posterior approach where the patient is placed on their side and a pegboard is used to stabilise the patient. With an anterior approach, the patient is supine, so they're on their back. With the patient in the supine position, it's actually better for the heart and lungs too. So if you've got patients with bad lung disease, cardiac disease, they're probably safer being done uh, through a direct anterior approach. I've been using the anterior approach for the past six years, and I think the advantage is uh, it's easier to get the components the correct size, it's easier to obtain equal leg lengths, uh, the recovery is quicker, most patients will go home post-op day one or post-op day two, we mobilise most patients on the day of surgery. Throughout the USA probably about 15% of hips are done through a direct anterior approach but that number is increasing. I'd say 95% of my first time hip replacements are now done anteriorly and if I look at my last six years I've trained 18 joint replacement fellows and 16 of those 18 fellows are doing their hips through a direct anterior approach. So I would guess over the next 5 to 10 years at least 50 to 70% of hips throughout the US may be done anteriorly. The advantages to me are the patients are much more comfortable postoperatively, they go home sooner, they get off their assistive devices more quickly, they start driving cars at two weeks and at six weeks uh, more than half of the patients are not using a cane. In the long term I don't think there's any difference in the results in the way of the longevity. The failure rate for hip replacements is very, very low and, and we've learned too from our patients in that we used to start people on outpatient therapy at six weeks but we were finding with this anterior approach that the, the home therapists were calling us saying can they start their outpatient therapy at two weeks and people were starting to drive cars at two weeks so you learn from your patients sometimes as to what they think they can do.